away from all your shame You know you wear it inside Run away with all your lies Run away in your disguise You know you don't fool me You pay me for your boredom You pay me for your pain Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Paul Mash TV I'm your host, Paul Mash And uh, we're glad that you could join us again today and as usual, feedback keeps getting better and better, and um, I'm glad that uh, you really enjoyed the show. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, talk to us, uh, there's many ways you can do that. There's uh, YouTube. Just uh, click that subscribe button right down there. And uh, be sure to reply to the video and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, also email. There's uh, pmashtv, all one word, at gmail.com. You will always get a response back, and uh, you can use that not just for fan mail, but if you're a band or solo artist wanting to be on the show, you can use that email for that too. And uh, there's always Facebook. Just go to facebook.com forward slash palmashtv. And uh, if you missed any of that, obviously we have a closing credit screen at the end of the show, so feel free to uh, check that out, and we'll go from there. Right now from Bella Vista, Arkansas, we have Gary Nelson. A uh, very talented musician, and uh, I think you're really going to like this guy. And uh, we're going to do that in just a moment. But first, here's a word from Click Jam. Don't go away. <laughs> Jam. Well, hello everybody. It's time for another interview, and with us from Bella Vista, Arkansas, we have Gary Nelson. Thanks for joining us, Gary. Well, thank you, Paul. I really appreciate you taking the time to interview me today. Yeah, it's no problem. Uh, we enjoyed having you, and um, I guess uh, the question I'd like to ask is, uh, I mean, I ask this all the time, but I ask it because everyone has their own story, but tell me exactly what this made you decide to become a musician. Well, my father was a country singer in the uh, Chicago suburbs. That's where I was raised. And he used to play in these uh, country honky tonks every weekend. And so his band would come to our house and they would rehearse. And I, you know, I'm like seven or eight years old and I would just sit there and listen. And I'd listen to the guitar players and uh, the drummers and the music and my, my father playing. And uh, I just knew that I had to be a musician one way or another. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Uh, but then about, an, uh, about a year later, um, I just got a real hankering and, and heartburn to learn how to play the guitar. And so my father, um, he patiently showed me some, some chords and stuff like that and got me started. And his lead guitar player, um, he showed me some leads and stuff like that. And so uh, by the time I was 10 years old, uh, I, I played pretty well and uh, started my own band when I was 11. So that's how I got started. And then from there on, you know, I rolled right through the rock and roll ages and stuff like that of the Beatles and Elvis and all that kind of stuff. So, mm, okay. Well, that, that's a good story. Um, why, why don't you tell me about, uh, and I think you probably already mentioned a couple of them, but are there any other influences besides um, anyone that you can think of on the top of your hand? Yeah. Yeah, as the, uh, you know, as time went by, you know, like there, you know, 1959 through 1964, around that area there, you know, there was Roy Orbison, Dion and the Belmonts, you know, and, and I loved all that kind of music, you know, but I, you know, but I, I favored Elvis more and, uh, but I loved Roy Orbison. Uh, the Beatles came out in, uh, you know, in the early 60s, 63, 64. 
but that movement, that British movement that happened then uh, was a huge influence to me. And that's how I got to write music when I was uh, 14 years old was uh, because John Lennon and Paul McCartney wrote music. And so I started writing songs at that time. And that's what gave me that burning desire to do that. But as we went through the 60s and 70s, there were so many groups that, uh, that I just loved their music. Led Zeppelin, uh, The Eagles, um, Bad Company, uh, you know, all, if it had rock and roll in it, I mean, if it, it didn't have to be rock and roll, but if it sounded like rock and roll to me with a good beat guitar parts, you know, uh, uh, great lyrics and a beautiful melody line, I liked it. Didn't matter who did it, I, I just loved it, you know? And so I continue to write songs throughout the years and uh, if you listen to my catalog, uh, I, I've been told by quite a few people that I've interviewed with that, uh, you know, uh, we hear a little of this guy in you, we hear a little of this guy in you, we hear a little of this, a little of that, a little country, a little blues, a little, you know, a little everything, you know. And uh, I say, yeah, that, uh, my dad used to call me a Duke's mixture of music because uh, everything I do is kind of different. I can write a real hard rock and roll song today. And then, you know, I can crone you like, well, I, I can really do something really uh, soft and easy and country for you, you know. So uh, it seemed like that uh, in those stages, you know, from uh, a teenager to, um, you know, my mid-20s and 30s, they're just, anybody who had any good music, uh, that's, that's what I like to listen to. And, and I always listen to, to songs that had good melodies and, and words and, and beats and stuff like that. Of course, I got to tell you, the beat got me right off the bat. You know, if it's got a good beat to it, you know, I, I, I'll listen to it. But uh, love those types of music and those types of artists out there. Yeah, and you had mentioned Roy Orbison. That was probably one of my top favorites uh, when I was younger, too. And uh, I, I, I think I had a, I think my parents had a record of them. And um, I listened to all that stuff, you know. And, and I, I, I think he's probably a, a legend because of it, because, uh, you know, even through the 80s, you know, he was even doing stuff like the Traveling Wilburys and yes. things like that that he was a part of. And, of course, uh, he passed away right in the middle of all that because, uh, matter of fact, uh, I think the second video they made, he had already passed away by that time. So they had to do it. And they had to put him in there posthumously, like a picture or something. Right. But, right. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, he's probably one of my favorites, I think, uh, yeah, of those bands you mentioned. Um, well, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a lot older than you are. So when he released Pretty Woman, I, I, I'm just telling you, you had, you had to be in, in time at that time in society and radio to just understand what that song did to the music business. That song just, he, Roy Orbison knocked the Beatles off the top of the chart with, with Pretty Woman, knocked them clear off the chart. Uh, great song. I, I continue to do that song in my band because I still do live shows today. And so we do classic rock and a combination of my own music. And we still do Pretty Woman, Crying by Roy Robinson. And we do some Dion and the Belmonts and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I've always liked Roy Robinson, you know, and I can't sing like him, but I get awful darn close. <laughs> yeah. And even uh, like your songs, you mentioned like Pretty Woman and Crying, those are couple of my favorites of his, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Well, uh, let's talk about your albums. Do you have any albums out, or, or would you like to do yeah. some albums? Yeah, I, I do have some albums out. I my, my first album I released in 2016 called Continues to Burn, it has six songs on it. Um, it was my first uh, attempt at uh, recording on a, a computer. Before that, I was recording on tape machines, and so it was my first attempt at that. Six songs on there, uh, Continues to Burn, Love and Kind, uh, Tonight She'll Hold Me, um, At Your Door, and Made a Love. Uh, and I, I still sell those CDs at my shows. And I just released my second CD in the fall of last year called Disguise in Your Eyes. And that's, that album's got 10 on it. And uh, um, when I get back, I have some, some uh, traveling to do here in the next couple of weeks. And when I get back, I'm going to uh, finalize the uh, process of getting uh, CDs for that album, uh, mm. Disguise Your Eyes, and then I'll, you know, I'll sell that uh, at my shows that I play at. Uh, but you can buy it online today. Uh, you know, it's on the iTunes and all of the platforms out there, digital platforms, Disguise yeah. Your Eyes. And if you go to my, uh, my website, uh, www.garynelson.com, that's G-E-A-R-Y, Nelson.com, 
it's all there you know, you know you can download it digitally if you like to do that or even stream it if you like to listen to it so um but yeah I, and i'm working on uh, some single releases right now and uh and i and i i have enough uh, uh songs in my catalog paul I, I could do probably 10 cds right now so you know <laughs> but, um, but i try to do a little at a time because i when i release a song i want to make sure <clears throat> right so it usually takes me uh, a month or so to release one single song mm. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to that. And um, right now, obviously, um, we got a music video from you, Hopelessly in Love, I think, think is the title of it. Uh, yes, it is. And this, and, and this uh, wonder, be was, a, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to say maybe you could talk to us about it, tell us the story behind it and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is actually a song that I have not released. Um, mm -hmm. My sister uh asked me a couple of years ago she said gary why don't you just grab your acoustic guitar and uh, sing a song on video and release it um and so last year i recorded that uh that, that song i wrote that song a few years ago and but i've never released it yet um even though it's not released all my songs are copyrighted i i never let any song go out without it being copyrighted but i have not released it to my publishers yet or anything like that and i i plan on it uh, one of these days but it's a, it's a heartwarming song, and it's, and it's about a, a young man who was infatuated by a young girl, and she never paid any attention to him. And uh, as uh, he got older, then, then some young girls started infatuating about him. And so it's a story about life um, and hopelessly in love, and which you know most of us go through that at one time or another, men and women. Um, but it's, uh, it's a song that has, a, I, I feel, a, a very, very good meaning. And I've got some really nice positive feedback on it, uh, just you know, just from the video being out there. Although the song is not available to anybody, uh, you can uh, listen to the video and uh, you, you can watch me. And it's a it's a live video, so it's not it's not tampered with. Uh, that's me and my acoustic guitar sitting there in front of a, a video camera, and uh, no special effects, no nothing. You know, it's 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 all me. You know, so if you like it. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Give me some uh, good comments. If you don't like it, just pass me by. Okay. All righty. Well, we'll watch that in just a moment. But uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you again, Gary, for coming on the show. We'd love to have you back sometime if you ever uh, have anything new to plug. Well, Paul, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I would love to come back. And uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens in the next month. Uh, because I do have some new releases coming out in about uh, four to five weeks. And uh, Maybe we can uh, do another one, and uh, I can announce the release of those songs on, on your show. Okay. Well, that, that sounds like a good plan there. And uh, we'll go ahead and watch Hopelessly in Love by Gary Nelson right here on Paul Mash TV. Don't go away. Hello, this is Gary Nelson, singer-songwriter from America's Midwest. This is a song that I wrote a few years back. It's called Hopelessly in Love with You. I hope you enjoy it. Now I 
Sleep.